Hi, I'm Toby Hodges from Yachting World and I'm very excited to be aboard what is quite probably the fastest non-foiling monohull ever built, Scorpius, that clubs 1125. Think of ocean record breakers, you'll think of Wild Oats and Rambler 88, Comanche, these are 90 to 100 foot ocean going race boats. This is nearly 30, 40 foot longer than those. Everything about this boat blows everything out of the water. It's just phenomenal. Coming up face to face with it, everything, every single bit on this boat blows your mind away. It's just staggering. Canting keel is used to achieve the necessary writing moment using a small bowl and to keep displacement under 60 tonnes, which is exceptionally light for the club's 1125's length. This means that over 20 tonnes can be shifted up to 42 degrees to windward. The 60 metre high Southern Spars carbon mast is stepped far aft and raked right back, which, together with that extensive bowsprit, creates an enormous area for multiple furling head sails. In fact, Scorpius can set over 2,000 square meters of sail, which is the equivalent of eight tennis courts. So normally at this stage, I would try and show you around a boat myself, but we have a much better option. He's the skipper of the boat and he's kindly going to show us the deck and explain a bit about how everything works. As you can see, we have J2, J4, we have J5 and we have IRS. We have four positions for furling uh, sails. J2 is um, 400 square meters, a bit more, but J0, which is in the same sitting point, is 550 so but it's coming from the bow speed so big size yeah very size with the main which is uh, 660 we can go up wing with about uh, one near to 1200 square meters up wing and then we have here the mast uh, 59 meters 59 from the water, meters to the from the water, from the water. <laughs> a boom 18 meters a big one <laughs> There's a friction ring and a furler. I mean, these are normally pretty lightweight bits of kit and this will be built as light as it can be. But I mean, it's just bloody enormous. All titanium carbon fiber. So you come down Scorpius's main companionway here and into this super minimalistic but pretty beautiful interior in this modern and seaworthy nature. So it's everything has been redesigned in here about making it lightweight and practical to be a live aboard at sea. Um, live aboard as in be aboard during a race. Um, so yeah, it's more like a, a race boat in terms of you've just got sort of the pipe cots which, which retract up, a very, very minimalist galley area with just a microwave and a fridge. And then what's really nice is these, all the seats and the table here completely cant over. So whatever angular heel you're at, you can sit at comfortably and have a flat table there uh, and feel safe while you're sitting. So very unusual for a super yacht to really deliver on that, on that front for its guests to be able to sit and enjoy um, without feeling precarious or being able, because you can see the, the whole beam of the boat. It's a big area that you could fall across, but not here because you're sa safe to hold on to handholds, um, fiddle table, and everything has been really well thought out in that regard so that you can move around this central section of the boat feeling secure. A couple of details to show you as well as you might not be able to pick it up but this is all titanium that sits on the carbon fiber and even the decking is the sea deck 
you know, like the sticky foam that you have on the deck outside as well. It's it brings the seaworthy element of the exterior inside as well. It's yeah, really new. I've never seen anything like it. And then the, again, the head, the panels on the ceiling here, they just on the deck heads, they're super lightweight fabric as well. Everything, everything is just designed with weight in mind, keeping it out of the boat. And again, all this is just bare carbon fiber you're looking at everywhere. It, you know, the quality really has to, has to be seen to be believed to, to, to use pre-preg carbon and leave it, it totally exposed. It's, you have, the craftsmanship has to be spot on to be able to do that. And then moving forward through this super light main bulkhead door, you come into this sensational mechanical area of carbon fiber, which, so this, what we're looking at here is the housing for the sea foil dagger board with various inspection hatches in it. And then the hydraulics mounted on the bulkhead. And then if you look down through, this one is lighter. See the top of the counting keel ram as well. And it's, what really hits home when you're looking around here is just the quality of the carbon fiber everywhere. Fernando says this took, just this section of the boat alone was two years to build. You imagine the stresses and loads that go through here as well. That's the uh, fire pump there. So then an open bulkhead hatchway through here and it's like walking through, you know, remember we're on a super yacht. This would normally all be accommodation here as you move further forward. Just a cathedral. Um, this incredible exhibition of carbon fiber shapes and sculptures. And what you won't see here is just the scale of this. I can't reach anywhere near the deck above my head here. And that is standing on a floorboard that looks at least a meter high from the, from the bilge. It's just, all it is, is the stringers and bulkheads and longitudinals structure. The rounds that support the inner four stays and then the bulkhead further forward. It's just phenomenal. I mean, when they said this was just stripped out minimal, they really meant it up here. And then moving back aft again, what you probably didn't notice coming past here was this central section. Open a carbon fiber door and you're into the white laboratory of the engine room. And look how minimalist it is in here. And look, even the ex extraction is in carbon, the hydraulic oil tanks in carbon. There's where the mast step sits on with the rams below it and the bottom of the, uh, sorry, the top of the canton keel above that. And then the engine below with a spare generator there. No batteries, no inverter, no chargers, all totally minimalistic. So huge pneumatic sealed hatch there. Don't actually use it really for putting sails below because the sails will stay on deck or in the cockpit at least. You can see these attachment points for pad eyes coming through the deck, just super neat, all really, really clean. And then again, the three dimensional jib sheet set up. So you can bring the, the jib sheet right in board and set the height of it as well. Point as high as you can. And there's the Scorpius tender built by Lloyd Stevenson in New Zealand. Just the 1200 horses powering it along and you can see the anchor for Scorpius there. So it's used to carry the anchor, to fuel bunker with. You see it's used like a pilot boat as well um, with, a, with the grab bars there. So it nudges up to the transom of Scorpius 
very very clever that's 50 feet this boat and it looks like a little toy bath boat very wide side decks here nice flush flat coach roof part and then the towering 60 meter high modulus southern spars four spreader rig with future fibers carbon rigging boom 18 meters long slab reef main contained on those arm, arms there it's just a staggering the scale of it and then this this coach reef dodger basically was was added later in the day but they're very thankful it has been it is removable but it gives a lot of protection to those especially guests or those sitting in this forward cockpit area so ordinarily that would be used on a super yacht as guest seating and stuff but they'll, they'll stack sails along this central part and then like you're standing on this sea deck all around here same as they use on the volvo 70s and then if you look in you can see a bank of constricted clutches although the halyards and the reefs are all on, on halyard locks the buttons there for various rams and deflectors the travelers the cunninghams uh, and the readouts there to set them to the precise tuning measurements you need to where the driver gets to go with a foot brace for it so you can stand at a good angle of heel i noticed how the main sheet trimmer was sitting on the edge of that to trim that main and you've got control of the canting keel from the wheel, hydraulic stop button, and an intercom as well to speak to those at the navigation station. And then the big winches aft here for the running back stays. Huge beam across here where the main sheet traveler runs on just below in a little well below the deck here. Then moving down the aft companionway, still all carbon fibre obviously. Into the fighter pilot zone, navigation room with the Cantu angled seat. Just all carbon fibre back here, really not much to show you. Open bulkheads, a couple more bunks there and then the jet boils for making instant food and then one more open back bulkhead back here into an empty room for the steering gear you can probably hear the noise the water's making just on the hull here it's probably not the most relaxing place to get a night's sleep today we were looking at you know 15 knots typically upwind 15 16 and then downwind we were doing 20, 23, 25. Very easy you go into the 12s, as soon as you have a bit of pace. To go 14, 14 and a half is, I think, achievable, but it uh, will depend a lot on the, on the um, true wind angle targets that we want to have. Now. So I think this is a, an area that we need to work a lot to understand also the risk, the sales, if J2, if J4, if J2 with one reef, or J4 with the full main, is all these crossovers, I think we are far away from understanding. Dream type will have an influence on that also. But uh, as soon as we open seats uh, and you go to a 55, 60, you quick um, go to target, so it's pretty fast on that. Um, very easy to go in 55s like today, going to 17 knots uh, pretty quick with already 20 knots. Um, then downwind BMG, that was the uh, testing we, we did today with a 3 J4 IRS and full main, uh, 18 to 21 knots, uh, true wind speed. We were close to targets, I, I must say. This is going to be a learning curve, which is always in a ball like this, and especially in this one. Um, but uh, yeah, an enjoyable one. Enjoyable. No, yeah. we are getting a really good fun of this boat. Yeah, we are concerned because a <laughs> lot of systems, a lot of problems here and there, which is normal in, in a boat like this. Yeah, well, yeah. good luck in the fast yeah. net. Yeah, thank you, Fernando.